So I'm sure a lot of you have heard at the moment about what's going on in China. So essentially they are limiting the amount of hours that a miner can go on during the week. And during the weekend they can go on for a maximum of one hour. And that's Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Anyway, there's all sorts of rumours and bits and pieces flying around. So I thought I'd just clear up and give you the breakdown of what it is. And we'll try and keep things in the factual sense. I'm not going to go too much into the whole, well, I think China are wrong for doing this, blah, blah, blah. But I find the uh, subject truly fascinating. So we'll start at the beginning. Basically, Beijing came out and said that they are limiting games for people who are under 18 between the hours of 8 and 9 p.m. And that's on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays and holidays surrounding it. And this is riding on the back of the worry that children are currently forming gaming addictions. So in a nutshell, you're playing games so much that it's actually having a negative detriment to your health and lifestyle. Now this is where things start to get a little bit muddy and I think there is some confusion overall on what is actually being banned or not. So Bloomberg reported that it was gaming platforms from Tencent Holdings to NetEase. So it's my understanding there's only Chinese owned gaming platforms and it is also my understanding and again i appreciate any correction on this that the majority if not all games in china are all managed by their own independent chinese platforms so i'll give you an example back when wow was still allowed in china netease was the company that used to manage it and it's the same sort of thing if you look at lost ark it coming into the eu and na is going to be managed by amazon yet in korea it's managed by um, the smilegate subsidiaries and in russia they have my games who are responsible for managing it so here's where things get a little bit more interesting and when i originally read the headline i took it with a little bit of pinch of salt and i scoured reddit to find the actual specifics of the whole law and i came across a post by an individual called white lantern 12 the headline here is a tad sensationalist this new rule is targeting specific companies that are well known for predatory gambling type practices in multiple countries let alone china those companies specifically have to limit people under the age of 18 who probably can't legally gamble. This is much more of an anti-gambling rule trying to adapt to how those companies handle loot boxes and stuff in those countries. I'm not saying it's perfect, but kids in China can only play games three hours a week isn't what it is at all. And then further on, they went to say it's well documented that a lot of games run by these two companies mentioned are hyper predatory with gacha systems and in-game gambling and monetizations. Lots of countries are now putting restrictions on those companies or games and loot box slash get gacha elements. This legislation is instead saying leave the gambling or stuff in the game, but limit the access to it for children under 18. I honestly don't understand the time limit thing when it would in theory make more sense to just say no under 18s but still. This isn't like Overwatch or League of Legends is limiting kids playing the game. It's very specific companies who run specific games in the Chinese market being told they have to limit access to kids under 18. Now when you put that into context with everything else and what we've been doing in Europe for example because I'm sure a lot of you remember the EA debacle and the whole Belgium gambling commission and the big push to remove loot boxes from games then it all kind of makes sense. However I'm still not sure if it is all games or just some games. This The only post I've found on it so far is the one on Reddit. But going back to the initial brief and what China have actually said it has stated that all gaming platforms have to sign up to their anti-addiction systems. So at this point, if you know more than I do, do let me know in the comments below because I'm still not sure if it means that all games are currently banned or just a specific genre of them, i.e. games with gambling elements or gacha elements that you know under 18 shouldn't necessarily be having access to. As you can imagine, there's been some big financial impacts off the back of this. NetEase, for example, have dropped $8 on their share price. And it's also predicted that Tencent are going to be taking a similar sort of hit as well. Interestingly enough, there's been quite a split on opinions on whether or not this is a good thing or not. On one side, you have a group that says it should be down to us, who, how much time we spend online. And on the other side, you have a group of individuals who actually support this kind of action, saying that kids spend too much time on video games, we should be limiting it. And if you have a look at the phone market, even if you take away the whole gambling element, there are companies out there who are implementing huge 
predatory practices. A while ago there was quite an eye-opening seminar talking about how to make your game as addictive to people as possible and if you open the majority of mobile games you just get hit by an absolute bombardment of sign up to this, spend this little bit of money, you know loot boxes, time restrictions every dirty practice just seems to be in there there seems to be no legislation in place to restrict anything like this for me i feel it should be ultimately down to the parents who manage and control the time that their child spends on their games etc but at the same time i definitely think companies out there should have tools implemented that makes the job easier for parents to manage all of this and you could argue that the way china has implemented this is very extreme and completely on the other end of the spectrum, but arguably is the whole ethical rationale behind it justified or not? Anyway, I'm not gonna answer that question here. I'm gonna let you debate that in the comments below, but I thought I'd give you the update anyway. I find it a fascinating topic and I think we can have some great discussions about it. But for now, I hope you're all well. Have a great day everyone, and I'll be back with more news relatively soon.